Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, and you and me for uh, having me for the opportunity to speak about uh, Plan S. Um, I think it's a, it's a nice addition to the talk you've just heard, and we will um, have the chance to look at a few aspects of Plan S, where I think that libraries could play an important role. So, Plan S, this, this is not an introduction to Plan S. Um, we have just heard that many of you know what Plan S is, and I will go briefly about, uh, over a few things. But the reasoning behind Plan S is, and it's, this is also in the, in the call and announcement from this conference, we've had 20 years of open access, or not so much of that. Um, the funders are losing patience, and they said, well, we are interested in making the research that we fund as accessible as possible. And we think that open access is necessary for that. We want to accelerate the transition to open access. And the way we tried it before has not worked very well. So now we're trying to increase the pressure. Um, LANAS has this goal of immediate open access um, for all funded research starting in 2021. Um, brought forward by a group of funders called Coalition S, um, ever increasing since the initial announcement, by very traditional means of um, setting certain conditions for funded researchers. So they have to comply with those, um, those conditions that their funders apply. Um, there is a joint set of guidelines that all the individual uh, funders are going to implement, sorry, and the target group of those, um, those conditions are researchers, not libraries, it's still our target of libraries today. So there has been lots of updates since the initial announcement of PlanS, including um, the appointment of an open access champion and open access ambassadors, and more recently, more focus on both learned societies and repositories, because the initial response was very critical of how um, panels handle repositories. But, um, so this is just a brief overview of who's part of that. The German National Fund is not part of the coalition as right now, but many European funders are, and also the European Research Council, which made things interesting even for those researchers coming from the National Fund that is not part of the coalition. So the criteria are not that, that complex. Basically, it says, your research has to be published under a CC BY license, or maybe CC BY SA. There is no copyright transfer to a publisher allowed. You yeah, obviously have to keep that copyright. Um, you have to provide good metadata, machine readable metadata, and the hybrid group and optional open access in subscription journals should not be allowed, at least as a transition. There are three main routes um, by which researchers can be compliant with plan S. The first one is to publish open access in, a, in an open access venue, gold open access. This could be a journal, but it could also be a repository. The other way is to use a repository on the green route of open access. So publish with a subscription journal, then put a copy in the repository, but immediately. So there's no embargo allowed, and also you have to apply a CC BY license. If your publisher does not allow that, you're not compliant. And the third way would be to publish in a journal that is under a transformative agreement where the publisher has some kind of plan to move the journal to open access over the next seven years. Compliance with those criteria does not mean that the funders are going to reimburse researchers for that. If you have to pay money to your publisher so that your research um, can be made accessible via a repository, that's your problem. If you're publishing with a gold open access journal, they are going to cover it. So there's some, some um, difference between the are you compliant and are we going to pay for it. There's also the support of DORA, the uh, Declarational Research Assessment, meaning that you should not evaluate journals by its impact factor, basically, but by looking uh, at articles. Libraries could play a critical role with that because they have the funds that can and maybe should be used to, to fund open access. They provide information to researchers. They advise other people that lobby for open access. Um, they are often in charge of drafting policies or you know, some kind of institutional guidelines, and they provide the infrastructure. And even if we think that this is not important for libraries, the field around us is changing anyways. Uh, because of Plan S, publishers have to come up with new ideas how to be compliant, how to not lose European and, and in other places of the world um, funded researchers as authors. So the field is changing, we have to adapt to that, and we are well placed to play an important role in that game, as I um, hope to um, uh, demonstrate in a few, a few minutes. 
And the main task that libraries will have in this field is to enable the compliance of their authors and to pre preserve an open infrastructure that we need desperately for this. So there's six ways I think libraries can implement banners um, that are within their realm of you know, action and what they can influence. Institutional policies, transformative agreements with publishers, just mentioned in the, in the other talk, investing into open infrastructure, building institutional platforms, modernize their repositories, and support researchers directly. Institutional policies, it is important to have a clear message from the top of the institution. There has to be a clear message that we want to have open access, we want you to publish open access, we are not going to fund hybrid open access, but we are supporting you when you do it. We um, might look into increasing um, open access funds, but also to redistributing them, maybe not paying for APCs anymore, but, but um, paying into library consortia or paying into other forms of open access funding. We have to think about other types of publications uh, that journal articles. That has is about all kinds of publications that with strict set of rules um, implementing now, implementing now is for journal articles. We now have to think about other types of publication. And we have to measure compliance at our own institutions. So we have to provide researchers and administration with the data on how compliant are we with plan S and what to do about it in those cases where we're not. Transformative agreements are a very traditional thing for libraries to do. So subscription contracts, and then we try to put something into those contracts that um, makes the publisher promise to, to move this journal to open access. I haven't, it, it has been around for a few years now. I haven't seen a successful demonstration of how this works. So there are many cases of transformative agreements, much money going into that, but um, Nowhere I've seen a case where this journal then has eventually become open access. It's a very long perspective and we are waiting for some time. Um, Learn societies are often involved with publishing journals and we have to, um, to, to look closely at this. Maybe we can talk to societies if there's another way of publishing the journals that but we can publish the publishers. The requirements that Plan S puts forward can be, can be matched with those um, those agreements, but they are hard for libraries that have so far accepted everything that, that publishers have demanded of them. So, um, second publication rights without embargo. Everyone should be allowed to put their publication into the institutional repository without any embargo. Under a CC BY license, that is. No copyright transfer to the publisher, transparency about what is allowed and how much this is going to cost, and to not let authors pay for it. Seats, but to have some institutional way to, to handle this and not harass researchers and individual um, influences. And get rid of subscription contracts. So this is Plan S is about replacing subscription model with open access. When this is successful, there's no subscription anymore. So let's get out of that. Um, develop new models with maybe some kind of cooperative financing but this is very hard to do, and we have to invest some, some time, and we have to deal with free writing whenever we think it's going to be open access, and one or two or 100 libraries are not um, paying for that, the others have to pay for it. Investing into open infrastructure is very important, and uh, a topic that has been discussed at this conference, and will be discussed at this conference many times. There are many possibilities to redirect our library funds into, into supporting open infrastructure, um, subject repositories, long-term preservation systems, infrastructure to provide persistent identifiers, um, the journal management software, so maybe become a partner of an organization developing such a software, um, directories like the DOAJ or databases that collect some information um, that you need to do open access. And I, I'm talking about both the daily operation and the long-term perspective for this kind of infrastructure. So we need to to come up with the money so that, um, that that infrastructure can be operated on a day-to-day -day basis. But we also have to set aside some money to develop new features because we don't want our infrastructure to fall behind commercial alternatives. And open source and open data should be very clear criteria to decide what, what kind of infrastructure we're going to support. And Again, the difficulty to build consortial cooperative models of financing and funding such infrastructure are important. 
the governance models that we want to have for that, that might both include researchers for some kind of academic um, governance of these infrastructure, but also to include libraries, because when we are paying for that, maybe we want to have a word when, when it comes to deciding about the new, uh, new development rules. And we should strive for cost transparency with all these infrastructure and other means that we are doing ourselves. We're not only asking this on commercial publishers. They should be as transparent as possible why they are charging us which kind of money, but we should also be very clear about what, what the infrastructure that we are operating is going to cost. Institutional platforms, like in addition to that, these are institutional repositories, like we just heard from, from this university, build successful platforms and analyze how um, we can close the gaps. So what, which publications are not deposited with the repository and what can you do about that? <coughs> do we need additional rules? Do we need to talk to a certain research group because they are the ones missing? Um, we need clear policies and we need an honest handling again of costs and how to be able to, to build these, these platforms in a successful and sustainable way. Our repositories, and we've just heard how successful a repository can become with, with hundreds of thousands of, of articles and publications. But also we have to think about that there's no guarantee that the support of green open access in Plan S is forever. So right now there's some very strong language in Plan S that um, this is temporary and that it's going to be evaluated and maybe in a few years it will no longer be considered um, compliant with Plan S. So we have to think about why do we operate repositories and what we do with that. And I think that we should try to, to position our repositories as also venues for first publications and to, to offer them as, as means to have gold open access publications. Um, every of the criteria that, that Plamas has set for repositories and with the revised version of guidelines, those have been uh, a little easier to match now because they remove for the time being the requirements to, to, to handle XML files. But all those things like automatic deposits from, for instance, publishers, the support of JATS met, uh, XML, good metadata, persistent identifiers, and open API, delivery of the publications from your repository to other services like PubMed. These are things that we can do, and then we can look more optimistic, I think, into the future and think about how this repository can be a primary um, value for publications, and not longer only a secondary one. Support of researchers is the last of, of the points I presented in the beginning. It will still be very important to talk to researchers and to help them to be compliant with what their funder is asking them to do. And again, there's not, there's not a single set of rules for, for Plan S, but there are going to be 20, 30, 40 different implementations following the joint implementation guidelines. But your national funder or your, um, your um, other funder, like for instance the Gates Foundation or Wellcome Trust, they are then <coughs> have they are going to have their own set of rules and we have to help researchers how to deal with that. We have to make sure that the workflows when people are using our services are as easy as possible to use because we don't want to lose researchers using our services because it's taking them too long and too, they, they're getting lost in the process. Um, we have to make sure that everyone knows what kind of support we are offering. Um, like financial support, which kind of costs we are going to cover, because there will be cases where people think, I'm going to have to pay this because of Plan S, and then they will ask our libraries for reimbursement, and we have to say no, because it's not combined, because the funder is not going to pay for that, and we don't have the means either. So be very clear about what you support and what you not support, what you support um, only for a limited time. I would like for libraries to advise people against hybrid open access. It's not a, it's a, not a good way of publishing, it's not a sustainable way. Um, choose an open access journal or make sure that you can deposit with your repository immediately, but do not pay extra to make your article uh, available in that non-open journal. It's very important to, to talk to people about how, how there's a difference between compatible journals. So there are open access journals. Publish with those journals, you are going to be complying with the requirements of open access journals. 
Uh, there will be other journals where you have to pay extra or only on a case-by-case -case basis, you will be considered compliant. This is important to know, do stuff about that. And um, we should lobby for fair open access models. We should lobby for models where it's very transparent what kind of money we pay for, for um, publishing and to make sure that all the criteria that you want to see implemented by publishers So, when we, when we think about what to do next, I think it's important to embrace the core principles of planets. I'm not, I'm not thinking that planets is bad for us. I think that planets is, is an important step. There are other initiatives that are also valuable, but nothing's wrong with the core principles. Immediate open access using free licenses. This is something we've been asking for a little time, and we should, we should take the chance and embrace it and put it in our policies the same way that it has to put it to planets. Because the alignment of policies is one important goal of planets as well. And we need to find sustainable solutions, solutions both for external and in-house infrastructure. And we have to make sure that our primary responsibilities are towards academia and hopefully society, and not towards, for instance, publishers. So if this is disruptive, and if things are going to change, and Publishers are going to lose some, <coughs> some money about that. This should not be our main concern. Our main concern should be how can we make research available as much as available as possible, as openly as possible, and as sustainable as possible. Um, so, in conclusion, as I said in the beginning, funders have lost patience. They are going to act upon this. They are increasing the pressure. There's nothing in Plan S, I think, that couldn't be done by us. And there's also not very um, new things, like this is traditional funder action, they request compliance of authors that get funded by those, uh, by those organizations. There's nothing wrong with that, they got every right to ask for that, and they're going to get it, I guess, because now they are starting to measure compliance, which for some time they have not. Um, there might be other ways that, that we will see around, for instance, funders getting more engaged directly with publishers, Paying directly, not asking the author's institutions to get involved, this might happen. In conclusion, I think there's plenty of things that libraries can do and that they should do. They should quickly assume their role because otherwise things are changing and maybe our services will no longer be needed, but we can play an important role. We have to cooperate. This is like um, preaching to be converted. We've heard this many times at this conference so far. Cooperation is important. We want to work together to do that. We also have to deal with free writing. This is going to be important if we are lacking the funds to do something because a huge share of libraries or organizations are not, are not paying into this, then this is going to be a problem. We can start right away. I've talked to many libraries um, and they have said, well, let's wait how this turns out. Does plan as, is plan as here to stay or does it get changed again? I think we should start now. And we shouldn't demonize gold you know, Planas has been criticized heavily because of their focus on gold open access. I think it's the right thing to do. Gold open access is not equal uh, expansive open access, APCs. It can mean all kinds of things. It just means immediate open access. And we should do that. Um, Planas has a bias towards large publishers and APC models because that's the thing that is around and that everyone knows. But we can work around that. We can work against that bias. We can come up with solutions on our own. We have to be courageous about that. And it's up to us to build and support an open and sustainable publishing ecosystem where research can strive, where publications are, are found very well, and where everything is open and will be around for many years and without us paying huge amounts of money to publishers. Uh, because it's, that's a little small on the screen, I put the computer in a little <laughs> larger form there. So it's up to us. So we can, we can do that, and libraries are very important in that field. They have the funds and the means and the staff to do that, and I think they should, if they haven't done so, they should start now to do it and to implement things accordingly. 